Objection Handling in Sales 101. If you do any kind of phone sales or telesales in your job and you hear this a lot, how did you get my number? Then we need to talk. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Muna, and in this video, we're actually going to cover something that I see pretty frequently in the sales trainings that I run. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about sales related topics, business stuff. Sometimes I'm funny. Sometimes I talk about money. Sometimes I rhyme. You never really know. So this topic that we're going to cover today is actually something that not only do I see a lot in trainings, but also somebody recently asked me and they happen to be in the insurance industry. And now I have a disclaimer. This information is not for everybody. This video is not for everybody. Why do I say that? Because the information I'm about to give you, it will not work unless you can really take unbiased critique of what you are actually doing. In most cases, when I identify the reasons behind why this is happening or why my students are getting certain objections in their sales calls, some of my students will say, no, 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 but that's not the reason that I'm getting that objection. And I'm telling you, it is the reason in most cases. There's always gonna be a small exception to the rule, but in most cases, what I'm going to tell you is gonna be accurate the majority of the time. And this is coming from my 18 years of sales and sales training experience across multiple industries, B2B and B2C. So get ready to dive into the psychology behind why you are hearing, how'd you get my number? so much. If this sounds good to you, by the way, and you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing now so you don't miss the next video. Now let's get into this. Wanted to just take a second and let you know that you're getting something very special in today's video. If you click the link in the description below, you will get my ebook with 20 of my sales secrets that have made $5 million for my most recent company. I was actually advised to sell this ebook, but I decided to give it to all of my subscribers absolutely free. So click the link in the description below, get your free ebook, get learning, and make more money. Let's get back to the video. Now, why do I say this video is not for everybody? So during your sales calls, if you are hearing, how did you get my number a lot? Here's the deal. What this means is that you are not interesting enough or you are not capturing their attention enough or you've lost control of that conversation. Usually a combination of all of those. And see what I mean when I say this video is not for everybody. This is painful to hear. And most people's reaction to this is, no, 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 not me. I didn't lose control of the conversation. It's not that I wasn't interesting, is that they were having a bad day or whatever the case is. So if right off the bat, if that was your reaction to what I said, then maybe this video is not for you because the information I'm about to give you is only going to work if you accept what I'm telling you, because this is the truth. So if you're hearing this a lot, it simply means that you are not interesting enough to make them forget about how irritated they are. Or rather, it means that you are doing something that is irritating them or several things that are irritating them. And then you lost control of the conversation and they feel warranted to ask you, where did you get my number? Now, here's the thing. They don't actually care where you got their number. That's not a literal question. Just like when somebody says, I'm not interested, that's not a literal statement. Uh, by the way, if you wanna know some more information about replying to a bit not interested objection, check out this video. So continuing, the objection of where did you get my number? They don't care where you got their number. And if you start to explain where you got it, it's just gonna make that phone call worse. But what I want you to understand right here is that they are asking you that because they don't wanna say something that is even more rude. 
because what they actually mean is something like, you're irritating me, I'm annoyed with you, I don't like you, I don't like how you're speaking, you sound like you're gonna waste my time. It could be any one of those things. But rather than being that blunt and rude, they're gonna say, how'd you get my number? Because through that, you will understand that they're annoyed, right? So this is the first step in the process. You have to accept the fact that if most of your cold calls are coming up with this objection of where did you get my number, it very simply means that you are doing something wrong and in most cases you're doing several things wrong. I'm not going to get into all of the things that you can possibly be doing wrong in this video, but if you want to check out this video, this one will actually get into a few things that you're probably doing wrong. Again, if you have unbiased self-critique and you can actually recognize or you're willing to record yourself and see, am I actually doing these things? Okay, so let's say you've accepted that. You understand that and you're on board. Now, what you need to do is you need to work on not only fixing those things that you've been doing that are annoying the prospects, but then when you do still hear this objection, you need to be able to pivot very, very quickly to save the phone call because the second that you hear them ask you this question, you'll know they're irritated and you need to be very sharp in your response. So when they ask you this question, you have two choices on how you're gonna answer. The first way is what I recommend is with humor. Humor is a huge benefit in sales and it's your best shot of turning this call around. So if somebody says, how'd you get my number? The humorous response would be, oh, well, I have a list here of the 50 most successful and smart businessmen in Chicago, whatever city you're in. You happen to be at the top of that list. By the way, what does it take to get on that list? Now, this question is going to catch them off guard because, first of all, they might think you're serious <laughs> about this list and they're going to want to know what a successful businessman list are you talking about? But if they do realize that it's a joke immediately, it's even better. Now, if they think it's serious, it's still okay because you are gently boosting their ego when you explain that, no, I'm just kidding. And the majority of the time, depending on your delivery, this is going to work because what's going to happen is they will laugh or smirk or giggle, or they will do something in the area of laughter, which will relax them physically. And when they are a little bit more relaxed, they will stay on the phone with you a little bit longer. Now, the reason that you wanna ask them something at the end, like, oh, how did you get on that list? Is because if you go back, if you watch my other video about phone sales mistakes, not ending in a question is one of the biggest mistakes you can make on the phone because it just creates an awkward silence. So always end it in a question. You want to wrap it up with, well, the, actually the reason I'm calling is to one, two, three. How about we schedule a meeting for Tuesday or Sunday at 3 p.m.? So you incorporated the element of humor and then you brought it back to the reason for your call very quickly. So in my training, I teach be humorous, get to the point as fast as possible, and offer a couple options for meeting times. This combination is very, very good if, if your delivery is also on point. There's a lot of things happening at once here, of course. The second way to answer this response is just to be factual. But you have to be factual and then you have to end with a question. Let's say you're in real estate. Um, you can say something to the effect of all landlords lists are available after a home purchase for 60 days. I mean, whatever it is that's specific to your industry that is factual, you can just simply say that. But do not stop there because again, that will create an awkward silence. So what you wanna say is that factual statement. Oh, I was actually handed a list by my manager and you happen to be the first person on there. I'm really glad by the way, because you sound like a very sharp guy. So you can give a small little ego boost in there. 
That will keep them on the phone longer as well. But then end with a question. And so that question could be something like, but again, the reason I'm calling is not to stay on the phone for a half an hour with you because I'm busy and I'm sure you're busy as well. You just leveled the playing field there. It's a whole different topic. And then you get right to the point. The reason for this call is actually just to set up a meeting. Could we do that on either Tuesday or Sunday? Which one of those works better for you? So you're gonna be factual, direct, short, and then right away go for the request. So this is the best way to handle this objection in sales or in your phone sales. And again, the most important step is to recognize that you're doing a few things wrong if this is one of the things that you're hearing constantly. If you can accept that, you're already halfway on the path to changing it for the better. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, again, please do so now. And in the comments, let me know what other objections you hear very frequently, and I'll do individual videos on that. Like this video if you found value in it, or uh, if it offended you and you don't like it, click the thumbs down, but click it twice. Like, click, click. See you in the next video.